Hey y'all, I hope the sound is okay. So right now, I'm about at the lighthouse. Can't really see it in the background. Can you see it back there? No, there's a little hill there. But anyway, I'm, at the, I'm about at the lighthouse on Belle Isle, which is the southernmost tip of the island. And the lighthouse was there so that when boats would be coming down the Detroit River, they would know that the island was there and they wouldn't come crashing into the island. So uh, it's gonna be a seven mile run today. It's at least a seven miles around the island. I actually ended up running about this distance and then having to turn back because the way that I was hoping to go to make it less than seven miles was washed out. The road was washed out there. And so um, I had a dream last night. Oh, <laughs> what a dream I had. I, it was a combination of things, but to make a long story short of the dream, generally speaking, I was engaged to be in a play of some kind. I guess I was acting and they had set me up in some busted accommodations. The hallways of the building were so tight that I could barely walk down them. And inside the apartment was like all of somebody else's like junk. There were tubes and tubes and tubes of lipstick. And I don't know what that's about. I don't know why I would be dreaming about lipstick. Anyway, keeping it moving. Um, suddenly there was like this woman came over or this female presenting person came over and she wanted my weed. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not smoking weed these days. So, um, but she wanted my weed. And so I was generous and she ended up like smoking what she wanted to smoke and then spilled the rest of it all over the floor and it got wet and so she basically ruined the whole stash which is whatever it's whatever it is um and but then uh, suddenly i was babysitting for someone and i was um because i was babysitting i couldn't do what i was supposed to do and then it turned out that somebody else was actually supposed to be babysitting but they had tricked me and so ended up having me do all this work um, without any pay, which is something I do all the time, but that's a whole other story. And then it got to the point where I was done. I was done with this. There were like the bedroom they had me sleeping in was flooding, kind of like this is flooding right now. So I guess there was some premonition in the dream, but it was flooded so that I just couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I didn't feel comfortable. And it turned out that there was somebody else that was living in the same space with me. And usually if I'm getting accommodations when I do a show or something, you know, I get, you get a private room, which is my own privilege. I understand that. But this person was just cruel. And um, at one point, my dog was in the dream and they were supposed to be, they were supposed to take my dog for a walk, but the dog had to go so bad. The dog went to the bathroom in the hallway and then I ended up having to clean that up, which was whatever that was about. And then um, there was a fight. I was, I was trying to leave. And as I was leaving, a package was delivered that had the scripts that I was supposed to take with me to rehearsal. And also my husband had sent me some credit cards and I'm not sure exactly what that was about, but you know, very nice of, of, of Chris to do that. So then, I'm leaving already. I managed to get my hands on the credit cards, but the scripts, they were just there. And I knew the scripts were gonna get wet because everything in this apartment got wet for some reason. And now I'm walking in a, a flooded out park right now. So that's very meaningful. But um, as I was going down in the elevator, I realized the building was on fire. <laughs> and so as I'm going down in the elevator, it's becoming clear that this is a bad idea to go down in the elevator because, you know, as I got down and I could see through the doors of the elevator. So when I got to the floor, there was just fire. And I knew that if those elevator doors opened, I was going to die. So I pushed the button. Thankfully, the doors didn't open. I went back up and I ended up escaped by like jumping down off at of the top of this building. And then I realized that I'd left the dog. So I turned around to go back up and get the dog. And this cruel person that was in the building threw my dog off the roof and the dog landed and um, was hurt, but wasn't killed. So I picked up the dog who's all battered, but like battered, not like you would actually be battered. It would have been like pulverized the way this person had thrown it off the roof. And I'm trying to 
get away and then I got accosted and I was assaulted, like sexually assaulted. It was horrifying. And then I woke up anyway, but that is my dream. And all this to say, the dream was telling me that I had some, I have some anger that I'm holding on to. So I need to let go of that. So I've been all day just really breathing in, trying to be in the spirit, went for this run to work off some extra energy from being cooped up, you know, and to also commune with nature because nature is life and we are part of nature. So to have, ni- to have life, we have to commune with nature, but that's just, you know, that's just my opinion. Anyway, so I don't know what that's trying to tell me, but I'm gonna leave y'all with this final thing. I want to leave you with the thought, the power of Ashe. Ashe is this concept of, of the energy of the universe, the energy of the universe that makes things manifest. That's a simple, I'm sure there's going to be a, a bunch of people like, that's not Ashe. But part of Ashe is the power to manifest, the power of the universe that makes all things. It's like what makes, holds the molecules that are me together, what holds all of this and makes them gives them the form that they have has to do with Ashe. And there's a concept in shamanism that none of this is really real. This is all the product of a dream. And if you think about it, if you think deeply about it, if we are all just made up of the same materials, but we've somehow come together in a particular way, may it not be that it's just the force of will and cooperation in the universe that makes things appear in the way that they do. We have agreement about the color of the sky and the shape of the world. Maybe the world was flat until people started to believe it was something else. I don't know, but I just want to leave you with that thought. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, so I love you all. Be well. Until next time.